on Transported Felons. The Pennsylvania Gazette, April 11, 1751. From Virginia, we hear that six convicts who were transported for 14 years and shipped at Liverpool rose at sea, shot the captain, overcame and confined the seamen, and kept possession of the vessel 19 days. That coming in sight of Cape Hatteras, they hoisted out the boat to go on shore. When a vessel passing by, a boy they had not confined held her and attempted to tell their condition, but was prevented, and then the villains drove a spike up through his under and upper jaws, and wound spun yarn round the end that came out near his nose, to prevent his getting it out. They then cut away the sails from the yards, left the ship, and went ashore. But a New England sloop coming by soon after and seeing a ship driving in the sea in that manner boarded her, found things as above mentioned, and carried her into North Carolina, from whence a hue and cry went after the villains who had strolled along to Virginia. They were taken at Norfolk, and one of them confessed the fact, upon which they were ordered up, about two weeks since, to Williamsburg for trial as pirates. From Maryland we hear that a convict servant, about three weeks since, went into his master's house with an axe in his hand, determined to kill his mistress. But changing his purpose on seeing, as he expressed it, how damned innocent she looked, he laid his left hand on a block, cut it off, and threw it at her, saying, Now make me work if you can. Tis said this desperate villain is now begging in Pennsylvania. And his thought has been seen in this city. He pretends to have lost his hand by an accident. The public are therefore cautioned to beware of him. From Bucks County, we hear that a convict servant, one John McCaulfield, imported here last fall, has broke open and robbed several houses of goods to a considerable value, but being apprehended at a ferry is committed to prison. Yesterday, the trial of Samuel Saunders for the murder of Simon Gerty came on at the Supreme Court. When the jury returned their verdict, Manslaughter. When we see our papers filled continually with accounts of most audacious robberies, the most cruel murders, and infinite other villainies perpetrated by convicts transported from Europe, what melancholy, what terrible reflections must it occasion? What will become of our posterity? These are some of thy favors, Britain. Thou art called our mother country, but what good mother ever sent thieves and villains to accompany her children, to corrupt some with their infectious vices and murder the rest? What father ever endeavored to spread the plague in his family? We do not ask fish, but thou givest us serpents. And worse than serpents, in what can Britain show a more sovereign contempt for us than by emptying their jails into our settlements, unless they would likewise empty their jakes on our tables? What must we think of that bastard which has advised the repeal of every law we have hitherto made to prevent this deluge of wickedness overwhelming us? And with this cruel sarcasm, that these laws were against the public utility for they tended to prevent the improvement and well-peopling of the colonies. And what must we think of those merchants, who, for the sake of a little paltry gain, will be concerned in importing and disposing of these abominable cargoes? Rattlesnakes for Felons. The Pennsylvania Gazette, May 9th, 1751. To the printers of the Gazette. By a passage in one of your late papers, I understand that the government at home will not suffer our mistaken assemblies to make any law for preventing or discouraging the importation of convicts from Great Britain, for this kind reason, that such laws are against the public utility as they tend to prevent the improvement and well-peopling of the colonies. Such a tender parental concern in our mother country for the welfare of her children calls aloud for the highest returns of gratitude and duty. This everyone must be sensible of. But tis said that in our present circumstances, it is absolutely impossible for us to make such as are adequate to the favor. I own it, but nevertheless, let us do our endeavor. Tis something to show a grateful disposition. In some of the uninhabited parts of these provinces, there are numbers of these venomous reptiles we call rattlesnakes, felons convict from the beginning of the world. These, whenever we meet with them, we put to death by virtue of an old law. Thou shalt bruise his head. But as this is a sanguinary law, and may seem too cruel, and as however mischievous those creatures are with us, they may possibly change their natures, if they were to change the climate. I would humbly propose that this general sentence of death be changed for transportation. In the spring of the year, when they first creep out of their holes, they are feeble, heavy, slow, and easily taken, and if a small bounty were allowed per head, some thousands might be collected annually and transported to Britain. There, I would propose to have them carefully distributed in St. James Park, in the Spring Gardens, and other places of pleasure about London, in the gardens of all the nobility and gentry throughout the nation, but particularly in the gardens of the Prime Ministers, the Lords of Trade, and Members of Parliament. For to them, we are most particularly obliged. There is no human scheme so perfect, but some inconveniences may be objected to it. 
Yet when the conveniences far exceed, the scheme is judged rational and fit to be executed. Thus, inconveniences have been objected to that good and wise act of Parliament by virtue of which all the new gates and dungeons in Britain are emptied into the colonies. It has been said that these thieves and villains introduced among us spoil the morals of youth in the neighborhoods that entertain them, and perpetrate many horrid crimes. But let not private interests obstruct public utility. Our mother knows what is best for us. What is a little housebreaking, shoplifting, or highway robbing? What is a son now and then corrupted and hanged, a daughter debauched and poxed, a wife stabbed, a husband's throat cut, or a child's brains beat out with an axe, compared with this improvement and well-peopling of the colonies? Thus it may perhaps be objected to my scheme that the rattlesnake is a mischievous creature, and that his changing his nature with the climb is a mere supposition, yet not confirmed by sufficient facts. What then? Is not example more prevalent than precept? And may not the honest rough British gentry by a familiarity with these reptiles, learn to creep, and to insinuate, and to slaver, and to wriggle into place, and perhaps to poison such as stand in their way, qualities of no small advantage to the courtiers. In comparison of which improvement and public utility, what is a child now and then killed by their venomous bite, or even a favorite lapdog? I would only add that this exporting of felons to the colonies may be considered as a trade as well as in the light of a favor. Now all commerce implies returns. Justice requires them. There can be no trade without them. And rattlesnakes seem the most suitable returns for the human serpent sent by our mother country. In this, however, as in every other branch of trade, she will have the advantage of us. She will reap equal benefits without equal risk of inconveniences and dangers. For the rattlesnake gives warning before he attempts his mischief, which the convict does not. I am, yours, etc., Americans. The Pennsylvania Gazette.